Hello, all of you. Greetings to all the viewers and students who all are watching this video. Hello to one and all. Welcome to the Unacademy Learning app. Students, you will be experiencing a very, very good educational channel on this Unacademy app. You will come to learn every chapter in details in your CBSC class 11 and 12. Today, so students, let us begin the chapter. Today, I shall teach you the portrait of a lady by Kushwan Singh. Now, this story is in your Hornbill text, class 11. Now, the story, the portrait of lady is a very, very famous story, short story written by Kushwan Singh. Now here you see, Kushman Singh was an Indian writer. He was an Indian writer. He was an Indian diplomat. He was a journalist. And of course, he also became a politician. So his stories are very famous. And what is his lifespan? The lifespan is from 1915. To 2014. So he lived for 99 long years and have given a very vast contribution of literary works. Now this story, especially this story, the portrait of a lady, you will learn a lot from this story. This story of Kushwan Singh, in this story Kushwan Singh unfolds his beautiful relationship with his grandmother. He remembers her and he treasures his time spent with her. Now this story, into this story, you will also get the message children, the students and of course the viewers are also here. You can all get the message that what we should, we should all treasure our, the grandparents, the grandparents in the family. They are a very big wealth to the family. Isn't it? They are really big wealth to the family. And when you have grandparents, what happens? You learn a lot from them. Their life is itself an example to you. You learn through their life experiences. You learn how to handle various different difficult situations in your life. Okay. And of course, the grandparents, what do they do? They imbibe spiritual, religious, all kinds of impressions on the grandchildren. So the children, the grandchildren, what happens when they are with their grandparents in a family? They are all become, they, def, they are, they become very good citizens. They become very good persons. So here, Kushwan Singh also remembers his grandmother. So this portrait of a lady, whose portrait is he giving? Whose pen portrait is he giving? He is This lady is his grandmother whom he recalls here. Beautifully he recalls in this story. Now viewers, just see this, the story, how it starts. It's a really uh, Kushwan Singh has a very nice way of writing, very entertaining stories also. There is a tinge of wit Sarcasm. What is sarcasm? That is a little mocking, uh, mocking, uh, uh, mocking words or mocking attitude is also there. So here you see, Kushwan Singh writes that my grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was of course an 
old woman. He had been old and wrinkled for 20 years that I had known her. So what Kushwan Singh has been knowing? He has known his grandmother looking at her same old wrinkled for 20 long years. She was same. Okay. So she was wrinkled and what you can say? Might be she was incredibly old. And for Kushwan Singh, he had, he had the same picture of his grandmother being wrinkled for the past 20 years. He had been seeing her in the same way. People said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband. But that was hard to believe. Now you see the uh, mocking style of Kushwan Singh that it was hard to believe for him that his grandmother could have been young and pretty also. And she was, of course, a young and pretty woman. Of course, he uh, also had heard that she had, an hus had had a husband also. So my grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. So this was the portrait which showed Kushwan Singh's grandfather. He had a big uh, turban. Uh, big turban and loose fitting clothes was picturized on that portrait. He wore a big, uh, sorry, his long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. So the portrait which was kept on the mantelpiece, mantelpiece means what? A high raised table, which is, uh, which used to be above the fireplace. So his portrait, it seemed that his grandfather was hundred years and what picture he got what picture Kushwan Singh got? That he must be having several grandchildren. He looked 100 years and he did not look the sort of a person who would have a wife and uh, or children. He looked as if, now you see what is here? He looked as if he, were, he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. All right. Yeah, he could have only lots and lots of, sorry, grandchildren here. All right. As for my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. So for the poet, the young, uh, the grandmother being uh, young and pretty was almost revolting. He could not accept that idea that she could ever have been young or pretty. And of course, the grandmother often, she told often, often told us of the games she used to play as a child and that seemed quite absurd and indignified undignified so what did it do it seemed as if it was absurd undignified he can never think that his grandmother also could have played games and on her part and she treated it like fables of and we treated it like the fables of the prophets now fables of the prophets means it appeared as if the stories of grandmother used to be like the fables of prophets, like the stories of the prophets, which used to have only fantasy and myth. That cannot be real stories. So she had always been short and fat. So the grandmother was short and fat and slightly bent. Her face was a crisscross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere. So her face was a crisscross of wrinkles, full of wrinkles it was. Wrinkles are means what? The fold in the skin. And it appeared from one corner to the other corner. Drum. Old. Uh, she. Uh, no, we were. Uh, wrinkles from. Uh, we were certain she had always been as we had thought were, was almost. She was terribly old. So terribly old that she could not have grown older. And had stayed at the same age for 20 years. She could have never been pretty. So what did the um, what did the author, what did Kushwan Singh remember? That she could, she was always very old for him and she could never be pretty, sorry, she could never be pretty, but she was always beautiful for Kushwan Singh. Now why? You see the picture he's giving. She hobbled, means she walked unstably. The house in spotless white color, in spotless white sari, she used to move or whatever dress she wore, spotless white with one hand resting on her waist. And what she did with one hand resting on her waist and she did that to balance her unsteady walk. And to balance her stoop 
and the other telling the beads of her rosary. Now, telling the beads means the counting of the beads of the rosary. Now, what is a rosary? Rosary is a string of beads which people use at the time of prayer. So, her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale. Silver locks means all the white hair that is that came on her face, on puckered face. That means her wrinkled face. And her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayer. That is what she used to do. She used to constantly pray. She used to constantly go on praying in her inaudible prayer. Yes, she was beautiful. She was like the winter. She was like the winter landscape in the mountains. An expanse of pure white serenity, breathing peace and contentment. So what does the what does Kushwan Singh uh, give uh, give comparison to her that she was like the winter landscape of the mountains? She was an expanse of white serenity, breathing peace and contentment. That is what was her posture? What was her demeanor? She was she used to wear white. She had uh, silver locks. She used to remain a little bent, but he did not consider her to be pretty. But he considered her to be beautiful. She was, he compared her just as the winter landscape in the mountains. That is the landscape is what? The beautiful scenery in the mountains in the winter time. Why she, oh, she used to wear that white. And what was she? It is mentioned here. She was an expanse of white serenity. That is what the picture she gave. It was a white, peaceful uh, peaceful person, peaceful figure, what she had, she her appearance, and she was breathing peace and contentment. That is, she was an embodiment of peace and contentment. What is contentment? That is a satisfied person. My grandmother and I were good friends. My parents left me with her when they went to live in the city, and we were constantly together. Now, Kushwan Singh used to live with her, his grandmother in the village. Why? Because his parents had moved to the city for the job. So what did he, they were very good friends in his childhood. So in his childhood, Kushwan Singh and his grandmother were very good friends. Now she used to wake me up. In the morning, what she used to do, she used to wake him up and get him ready to for school. And she said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing-song way. So what did she do? She used to pray in a sing-song way. And when she used to pray, she used to give him a bath and then dress up. And what was the purpose of praying in a sing-song way? That he would learn the prayer. And But what? But Kushwan Singh was a child. What did he do? He used to listen. He listened because I loved her voice but never bothered to learn that prayer used to listen because he loved her voice, but he never bothered to pray, learn those prayers. So then she would fetch my wooden slate. Then what she used to do? She used to take the wooden slate which she had already washed. Now see the disciplined person. She, the grandmother, already used to wash the slate. I hope uh, students, you understand what is a slate. A slate on which you earlier used to be used. The children used to use it. That is the slate on which they used to write, learn writing on the chalk. So she used to keep the wooden slate ready. She used to plaster them with the yellow chalk and take the tiny earthen pot and red pen. All she used to take in a bundle and leave for school. And then what happened after breakfast? So what breakfast uh, Kushwan Singh had? He had a breakfast of thick stale chapati with a little butter and a little sugar on it. Now, viewers, you must uh, know the, by this, that in the olden days, there were no so much, so many cooking range. So people used to make chapatis at night and keep it for the next day. Stale doesn't mean rotten. Stale means uh, not fresh. Okay. So you used to take this for breakfast. And what else she used to do? She used to carry several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs. Now you see her compassion for the animals. And of course, later in the chapter, we come to know about the 
sparrows, she had a compassion also. So Kushwan Singh learns to be compassionate from his grandmother. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us and the alphabet, the alphabet and the morning prayer. While the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda, singing the alphabet or prayer in chorus, my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. So while the students, they used to learn in the school, the temple which was adjacent to the school, their grandmother used to sit and she used to read the scriptures. What are scriptures? They are the holy books. When we had both finished, uh, we would walk back together. So both finished means grandmother and Kushwan Singh used to, be, used to finish their uh, reading and studying. Uh, then they used to go back home together. Now this time the village dogs would meet us at the temple door. And they followed us to our home, growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them. So the stale chapatis which she brought with her, those were given to the village dogs to eat. Now when my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. So Kushwan Singh's parents called them to the city. That was the turning point in our friendship. Now that was the turning point, the changing point, this, from this point, their relationship drastically changed because he went to a city. Now, although we shared the same room, my grandmother no longer came to school with me. First point is the grandmother did not go to school with him. Now, when she, because why she did not went to school? She did not, she could not go to school with Kushwan Singh because Kushwan Singh used to go to an English medium school on a motor bus. Here you see, in a motor bus. So I used to go to an English school in a motor bus. So she, hadn't, she could not accompany him to the school. And there were no dogs in the streets. And she took to feeding sparrows. Now you see. So in the city life, there were no dogs in the streets. And what did she do? She started feeding the sparrows in the courtyard of her city house. Now, this is a lovely story. You will enjoy every part of it. And you see how sweet relationship they had. And what a responsible person this grandmother was of Kushwan Singh. Now, as the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. That is, their friendship started becoming very, very uh, they were started, they were breaking. Their friendship was breaking because he was growing up. This was his boyhood years. <clears throat> he was growing up. And while he was growing up, he was, uh, while he was growing up, he had to study more and different subjects he had to study. So the contact between the grandmother and, the, uh, and Kushwan Singh was getting very less. So for some time, he continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. When I came back, she would ask what the teacher had taught me. Now this is, please don't use, this is not correct. Taught me, I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning, the law of gravity, Archimedes principle, the world being round, etc. So Kushwan Singh informed her that she used to be taught English words little things of science and various principles of law of gravity, Archimedes and all these things in the science. Now, this made her unhappy. Now, why it made her unhappy? Because it was not in her knowledge. She could not teach him English and science. So, this also brought a drift in their friendship, drift in their relationship. They started moving a little away. All right. But that doesn't mean the grandmother is finishing her responsibility about him. She continuously cares and loves him throughout her life. So this made her unhappy. She could not help me with my lessons. And she did not believe in the things they taught at the English school and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. So she was very sad that uh, there was no teaching about God and the scriptures, that is the holy books. So one day I announced that we were being given music lessons. So 
one day what happened it was announced that uh, uh, he told his grandmother that he was also given music lessons which she detested like anything which she disliked like anything what connotation she had of this what idea she had of music she thought that music had a very lewd association very indecent association now you see here to her music had lewd association means very indecent association it was the monopoly of so in her thinking what in her thinking it was the music was the monopoly of harlots and beggars harlots means the dancers the prostitution in there only the music is was played so in that time it was the time of uh, in, uh, the india when it was under the british rule then it was india was growing after that after 1947 you know so they, they were all living in that time only kushwan singh of course he lived from 1915 to 2014 so he had a long life and of course he lived in the time of partition of india and let me just tell you uh, students and viewers that in that time he wrote a very beautiful novel partition uh, sorry train to pakistan which has been also made into a movie it is his one of his best novels so here what association she had she had very lewd association about learning music and she thought that music was not meant for gentle folk so she said nothing but her silence only meant disapproval that is she dis disagreed she did not like and she rarely talked to me after that when i went to the university now this is his youth when he went to the university he was i was given a room of my own the common link of friendship was snapped so the common link of friendship between the um, between the author and the and grandmother was snapped means was broken and my grandmother accepted her seclusion seclusion means giving up leaving others leaving the uh, leaving being lonely you can say so she accepted her seclusion see she got less of the time of kushwan singh and she accepted her seclusion with resignation why because she was a religious lady she was a very calm and composed person so she could plan what work she can do in her seclusion so what did she do she really left her spinning wheel now she had the spinning wheel to talk to anyone she did not talk to anyone but she worked the whole day at the wheel from sunrise to sunset she sat by her wheel spinning and what else she did she was she used to recite prayers recite means go on saying the prayers in herself only in the afternoon she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows so at the time when he uh, kushwan singh went to the university their relationship also the uh, common link of friendship was broken and how did she spend her time she spent her time at the wheel spinning and reciting prayers from sunrise to sunset and in the afternoon he used to feed the sparrows while she sat in the veranda breaking the bread into little bits hundreds of little birds collected round her creating a veritable bedlam of chirrupings so she used to make small crumbs of bread and give it to the, give to the sparrows so at that time hundreds of sparrows used to create a veritable bedlam means a confusion a lot of noise of all the chirrupings they were doing chip 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 all around hundreds of sparrows used to come and soon came some came and perched on her legs some used to sit on her legs she was so friendly with the sparrows sparrows also know that she was a very harmless lady so they used to sit on her legs on her all all uh, others on her shoulder and some even sat on the head so she smiled but never shooed them away so she was that was a very happy hour of hers and she used to smile and never drove them away it used to be the happiest hour half hour of the day for her when i decided to go abroad for further studies now you see the next development uh, in the life of uh, kushwan singh 
that he had to go abroad for his higher studies. So I was sure my grandmother would be upset. So Kushwan Singh thought that his grandmother would be upset. But no, she wasn't upset. She was a very matured lady. She loved her grandson from the core of her heart. She did not create any kind of hurdle or any kind of disturbance for her grandson. So it did not upset her. I would be away for five years. That is for five years, Kushwan Singh had to go uh, for his higher studies, to uh, uh, go abroad for the higher studies. And at her age, one could never tell. So for five years, he thought that no one knows at her age, she may die also in those five years. But no, she lived for those five years and she welcomed her grandson again home. Now see what the story tells. It's a beautiful, lovely story, a fond memory of his grandmother. Kushwan Singh students try to read all his other works also. It's very interesting. But my grandmother could. She was not even sentimental. So she did not even show any sentiment that she is sentimental means she didn't become any emotional also to leave him for five years because she was a strong lady. She was very calm and composed that brought gave her a lot of strength in her and she was also very confident. <clears throat> she came to leave me at the railway station but did not talk or show any emotion. Her lips moved in prayer. So she was such a brave lady. She was such a confident and brave lady that she went to the railway station also to bid him um, goodbye at the station because he was leaving for his higher studies. Her lips moved in prayer. So her constant work was to pray. Constantly she used to pray. Her mind was lost in prayer. Lost in prayer for whom? For Kushwan Singh, for his welfare, for his success in life. So her fingers were busy telling the bees. Telling the bees, I told you before also, is counting the bees of the rosary. Rosary is the uh, small bead, uh, a small uh, kind of uh, the, uh, chain in which the, there are bees, which is counted during the prayers. Silently, she kissed my forehead. So what did she do? Very silently, she kissed his forehead. And when I left, I uh, went, when I left, I cherished the moist imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between us. So that kiss she gave, it was, he remembers that he cherished that kiss. That was so encouraging for him that it was, and he remembers that that was the last physical contact between his grandmother and him. Okay. But here you see, but that was not so. After five years, now after five years, when Kushman Singh returns, uh, completing his higher studies, I came back home and I met by her at the station. So what? He, she met her at the, again at the station. She went to bring him home after five years when he came home. She did not look a day older. So she did not look a day older. That is why Kushman Singh in the beginning only tells that for the long years with his grandmother, he used, he had seen her in the same age, in the same look she saw. So she still had no time for words. And while she clasped me in her arms, I could hear her reciting her prayers. So what she did, she clasped him in his hand. And of course, she kept on reciting her prayers, praying for the welfare of her, of her grandson. Even on the first day of my arrival, her happiest moment were with her sparrows whom she fed longer and with frivolous rebukes. So on the first day of his arrival, of Kushwan Singh's arrival, what happened? She was so happy uh, that she again, she was doing the same work. She was feeding the sparrows and she was giving frivolous rebukes. Frivolous rebukes means very light hearted rebukes. That is very light hearted. Rebukes are what? Scoldings. Very lightly she was scolding the sparrows because they used to be very playfully uh, spend her, their time very playfully with the grandmother. They used to sit on her head, on her legs. They used to sit on her shoulders. 
and she used to feed them with the bread crumbs. So what did she do on that day? There was she was frivolous. She was she fed the sparrows longer and with frivolous rebukes. That is her excitement was showing. That is she was so happy that she was giving light-hearted sc uh, scoldings to the uh, sparrows. Now here you see. In the evening, a change came over her. So, in the evening, what happened? A change came over her. She did not pray. All right. But what was there? She did not pray that evening, but she did a different work. She collected the women of the neighborhood. And then she got an old drum and started to sing. She called all the women of the neighborhood. And then she started to sing. For several hours, she thumped the sagging, sagging skins of the dilapidated drum. Please don't play this. Skins of the dilapidated drum. So what did she do? She was just beating the skins, the drum, which had dilapidated drums. Means all the old, worn out drum she was beating the drum and singing with the women of her neighborhood. And what she sang? They all sang the homecoming of the. They sang the homecoming of warriors. This was the song they were singing, the homecoming of the warriors. Now the homecoming of the warriors. She was singing as if she was singing this song as if the uh, his her uh, grandson Kushwan Singh was a warrior. He has uh, he has won everything and. She was celebrating, actually she was celebrating the homecoming of her grandson. So what she did, she did her differently. She worked differently on that day. She sang on the old dilapidated drum. And that was the first time I had known her overstraining, that is overdoing. That was the first time the Kushwan Singh, her grandson, saw her overstraining, that is overdoing. That was the first time since I had known her that she did not pray. So she did not pray in that evening, but she was singing with the women of the neighborhood. Now the next morning she was taken ill and it was a mild fever and the doctor told us that it would go. So the next morning she overstrained herself in the evening and the next morning the she had a mild fever, means light fever and doctor said, that it would go. And but my grandmother thought differently. She told us that her end was near. So it was a different. She was such a woman and she understood that her, it was something unusual with her that she said that her end was near and that her death was coming. So she said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter of her life, what is the last chapter of her life? That is the last chapter in which she lives. She is waiting for her death. She had omitted to pray. She was not going to waste any more time talking to us. So she said that she would not talk to anyone in the last few hours of her life. So we protested. So the grandson, Kushwan Singh says that they all protested. They all wanted her to talk. But she ignored her protests. She lay peacefully in bed praying and telling her beads. So what did she do? She lay in her bed and she continuously prayed and telling her beads. Means she just kept on counting the beads of her rosary and she kept on praying peacefully. So in the beginning only what we find that she was an embodiment of peace and contentment. She was a very contented person and she was a very peaceful kind of person. And what she radiated, what she gave out to everyone, she gave out to everyone some peaceful time. So she lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling her beads. Even before we could suspect, her lips moved, mo stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. So she died in some time. A peaceful pallor, a pallor is a pale face, the pale appearance on her, spread on her face, the pale color, and we knew that she was dead. We lifted her off the bed 
and as his customary laid her on the ground. So, Pushwan Singh says that he, they all lifted her off the bed. That is, he took, they took them off her bed and laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shroud. What is a shroud? You know, the red shroud, shroud is the cloth which is used to cover the dead body. All right. So, shroud is the cloth which is used to cover the dead body. So, after a few hours of mourning, what happened? After a few hours of mourning, we left her alone. Mourning means all crying and thinking about her, all saying sad things. So, we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral. So, in the evening, what happened? In the evening, we went to her room with a crude stretcher. That is, stretcher is a, a wooden bed kind of thing. A, a kind of carrier, you can say. And brand stretcher to take her to be cremated. So, it had to be, the body had to be taken to be cremated. So, cremated means what? To just put, a, uh, put the body in the, uh, just to lit it, just to burn the body. So, she said that the body had to be cremated. So the sun was setting. So they went to the room and what did they see there? A very beautiful scene they saw. The sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with a blaze of golden light. So what was there? The sun was setting at that time and in her whole room and veranda was in a beautiful golden light. When the sun sets, you know that orange light comes from the sun and it is a beautiful color. So that beautiful color came in her room and veranda and we stopped halfway in the courtyard. So they could not go to the inside the room also. What did they see? All over the veranda and in her room, right up to where she lay dead and stiff, wrapped in the red shroud. Thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor. It was a unique scene. Thousands of sparrows had come. They were all scattered on the veranda of the room where she was lying down. And the red shroud was on her body. There was no chirruping. Now you see the maturity of the birds also. Non-human things also, they also show their maturity. Especially the birds, the animals, you know, if they are pets, then they will, get, they will always be very loyal towards you. They'll be always responding to you. They will always be giving you this kind of attention with their instincts. Now the sparrows also came there on the veranda to pay their homage to the uh, beautiful person, to the very, very religious person that is the grandmother. So the thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor, but there was no chirruping. That is they also knew that there was a, some kind of mourning and they did not cheer up. They did not take out the noise of being happy. They were all quietly sitting there. We felt sorry for the birds and my mother fetched some bread for them. So they felt sorry for the birds and they were thinking that they are not getting food. And mother of Kushwan Singh, she gave them some breads. Now you see what happens. She broke it into little crumbs. The way my grandmother used to and threw it to them. But you see the, the, the sparrow's behavior. The sparrows took no notice to, of the bread. They took no notice of the bread and we carried my grandmother's corpse off. They flew away quietly. So when they took away the corpse of that is the dead body of grandmother, they all flew away. And the next morning, of course, the sweepers swept the breadcrumbs into the dustbin. That is, grandmother was dead and they, they had come to pay homage. They did not come to eat in the veranda. They came to show their gratitude, their thanks giving to, the, uh, to grandmother. And this was a time when they did not eat. And they also, what did they do? They also joined in the mourning of the family. Because they also had happy times with grandmother. And of course, when the corpse was carried away, the sparrows also flew away. So I hope children, 
sorry, students and the viewers, you all enjoyed uh, reading this story and you all enjoyed to listen to the explanation. And you see, this story, I will give you a little uh, word meanings also I can give you through which you can understand the different expressions. Now you see here, now here in the portrait of the expressions and uh, of course the question answers are not here. Sorry, children. Sorry, sorry, students. Uh, expressions from the chapter is there. That is expressions in the text we have. That is the thought was almost revolting. That is the author, author had, I've just given you a little expand, had always seen his grandmother as incredibly old. So the thought that she had once been young and pretty was unacceptable for the, uh, for uh, Kushwan Singh, for uh, the author. And therefore the top thought was almost revolting for him. Now the next expression you see, an expanse of pure white serenity. That is the grandmother was old and had pale and puckered face. She wore spotless, I've explained here also, she wore spotless white and she was just like the winter landscape in the mountains. So what was she? She looked, she was an embodiment of peace and contentment. She thus presented a picture of pure white serenity. Serenity is what? It is the calmness. Her personality was so that it showed calmness. A turning point, that is when the author and his grandmother moved to the city house. Now, this was the turning point. Students, you can very well understand. I am explaining that is on page 4, this expression is there. A turning point, that is when the author and his grandmother moved to the city house. Okay, their relationship changed drastically. Now, the grandmother was unable to accompany the author to school as he travelled by motor bus. So, as he travelled by motor bus, neither uh, neither she could help him in the in his lessons. Although they shared the same room, but the author had very less time for her. Now, the next expression is accepted her seclusion with resignation. Now, she accepted her seclusion, that is, she accepted her loneliness without with resignation, with acceptance. In his early youth, when the author went to the university, now see students how it is, uh, how this can be explained. When he went to the university, he was given a room of his own. Their friendship broke and and grandmother accepted her seclusion without any complaint. She sat at the spinning wheel, reciting prayers from sunrise to sunset. And in between, in the afternoon, what she used to do? In this way, she accepted her seclusion here. She used to relax and feed the sparrows. Now, next is a veritable bedlam of chirrupings. The sparrows that scattered and perched around the author's grandmother created a lot of noise and confusion. And the grandmother sat in the veranda and broke the bread into little bits and threw it to the sparrows. Hundreds of sparrows collected around her and created a noise by their continuous chirping. Chirping, that is the bedlam or a veritable bedlam of chirrupings. That is, it was a veritable means what? A true, a correct bedlam means a chaos, confusion made a noise made by the sparrows. By what? By the continuous chirrupings, that is the chirping. Frivolous rebukes, that is frivolous rebukes are the grandmother realized that she would die and so was having some fun with the sparrows by scolding them with light-hearted rebukes for small mistakes they were doing. The grandmother had developed a special bond with the sparrows and the sparrows came in huge numbers and the grandmother fed them with the little bits of bread. And the sparrows perched on her legs, on her shoulders, on her head 
and what was she doing but she smiled and never drove them away the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum now the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum means it points to the old torn and deteriorated condition of the drum and the grandmother with the women of the neighborhood what happened sang of the homecoming of warriors on the old drum and celebrated what celebrated the homecoming of the author now students in this story you all learn so much isn't it you all learn what a wealth is the grandmother how precious sorry grandparents also not only grandmother grandparents are really precious you have a very beautiful childhood with them childhood or even if you if they are living in your youth or later life also if they are living they are very great treasure for you they will give all their time and with their example by their ex example what you learn you learn so many things and kushwan singh was a very successful man he uh, he learned a lot from his grandmother why because the grandmother gave a picture of that kind of personality who was a very calm and composed person she was a religious person religious person means she was very disciplined very disciplined person and she used to work very hard she used to always she brought uh, him up when he was a child he used to, she used to take him to school he used to feed him with the uh, nice chapatis chapatis bread butter and all these she had also time she had also consideration for the dogs village dogs and then she also fed the sparrows when she used to, when she was alone when the link of uh, friendship between the author and the grandmother was snapped at that time she started feeding the sparrows because she no more got the um, dogs in the town in the city so she started feeding the sparrows and you see how the sparrows also reciprocated their thankfulness to her after her death near her corpse near the body of her dead body what happened thousands of sparrows gathered together to give her homage to pay her homage so in this way you see the grandfather uh, sorry grandmother gave him all the time the caring the bringing him up and taking care of him loving him and of course me, making him a very confident person she never created any kind of uh, problem to them any kind of hurdle when he was going to uh, uh, going abroad he wasn't she wasn't sentimental at all rather she kept on praying for his welfare so in the end the birds also give a lovely homage and we learn a lot from this we also learn that uh, this from this story we also learn students what that there is a lot of beauty in joint family also so in this way grandparents should always be regarded and loved and given a lot of company right i hope you like the story very nice story it is no now uh, students whatever you uh, doubts you have you please write in the comments so that we can uh, go a little further now students it is uh, i have a, a special invitation for you now this hornbill book for class 11 is in the section c of your question paper now what is the question how is your question paper the question paper is of three sections first section is of the reading skills second section is the writing and grammar writing skills and grammar and the third section is from your two textbooks that is literature part that is the hornbill book and the snapshot so what is the way you are what way you are going to have a very good study of this uh, entire uh, course now in this course you will always pay attention equally to the three sections and one thing i must tell you students that these days you all are getting very high marks it's very easy 
in the in our times what getting a high second division in in our honors uh, graduation we were thought to be excellent students in master's degree if we got second division oh my it is very nice but now what you all are much much better than the previous generation you all are attaining 100 in your english you can attain so give your time in english studies and getting 100 in english will be always complementing your results when you get 100 what happens in your result in the board 11 if you get of course in the 12 also you can maintain so you can get a if you get above 95 or reaching 100 then what happens that will be a complementary to the other marks of your result cbsc result and that will of course bring a very good result of cbsc and what if you get a very good result in class 12 board of cbsc what is that that is the threshold for a beautiful career prosperous life so it is my request that you please give or please be dedicated to the studies of english and how can you do you can easily see my live lectures you can see my live teachings in an academy you can join the an academy and get various courses in which you'll be thoroughly studying english thoroughly you can get the explanation question answers word meanings everything so in this way you can get a hundred in your results now i have a request here that you please subscribe to my video those who are watching this video if you watch it you please subscribe to the video at an an academy platform all right and use what if you are using the code just see if you use the code what is my code nupur 10 n u p u r capital 10 if you use this referral code in getting admission for in the an academy then what you will get you get an additional discount in the fees additional discount of what another discount you are getting in the uh, subscription so this you can easily so here students i hope you have liked it please watch the video please share with your friends and of course subscribe the platform and use the code n u p u r 10 as a referral code for the additional discount in the un academy so here you see uh, students that the un academy platform is a very very successful platform it is giving the best tutors it is giving the best educators in all your subjects for your best results so for your online studies you can of course subscribe to the um, an academy platform as a learning app you can download the learning app you can join the an academy and you are always getting all the benefits from it is you will be properly studying it so this is the video which you will always subscribe please subscribe it and i hope you have enjoyed reading the story of the first chapter of your hornbill book class 11 that is the portrait of a lady by pushman singh and if you have any difficulty if you have any difficulty in uh, any point please write in the comment section so that i can give you more reference more answers to it so thank you students and i would always welcome you to the unacademy learning app please come and join and do use my referral code for your discounts thank you students have a nice time take care